Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right place if you're a team leader, a broker owner. You're looking to strengthen your luxury division. You're looking to break into luxury. You are in the right place, as always. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, uh, perhaps potential guests, shoot us an email, support at marketingluxurygroup.com, support at marketingluxurygroup. And previous episodes, we're getting some really good feedback on some previous episodes, so feel free to chime in and let us know what your favorite episode was. And if you do get value, please leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Michael Lafito here. Let's get right into today's guest. Uh, Jennifer uh, Berman here. Jennifer and I formally first met at a Luxury Connect, an Inman event going back, I believe it was 2016. I sat at your round table and uh, you, both you and Chris did an amazing job and we kind of struck up a friendship from then and, and, and I see you at all these big events and you're do, you guys are doing some amazing things. So uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to share some insightful um, information with our audience today. And Michael, that's not where we met. We met at a Christie's event many, many years ago. <laughs> you know what? We did meet at Christie's. You know what? Was it Christie's Chicago or yeah, was it Christie's it, in, uh, was it D.C.? Oh, I don't remember what state. You guys, I, I, I've been an international speaker and in all over the world for so long. You're all I, over. I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know what state or but where But you remembered was, but, Christie's. You're, you're absolutely yeah. right. Well, I brought the, the Luxury Connect with Brad Inman here to, to Beverly Hills. So that's, that was uh, kind of uh, my brainchild in New York. I've, I've, I've opened up and, and uh, hosted and moderated for Brad Jesus since he started back in the 90s, in the mid-90s. So, um, you know, the luxury here in Beverly Hills, I ran the Hilton and Highland, uh, which we, Rich Hilton, Paris Hilton's dad, and Jeff Highland, they founded Christie's International Real Estate. So that's why I think you had, we had met because I help uh, most of the top agents do their, I write a lot of their, their, their speaking events and I help them get up on stage. So I'm TV trained. And so that's where I had been helping one of the guys that was doing the opening keynote uh, for Christie's. I think that's where we had met. Originally. You know what? I, I, you, you are right. I stand corrected. We had met through a Christie's international event. I formerly was with Christie's. <laughs> right. No longer a Christie's affiliate in Chicago, but I was with a Christie's affiliate for four years and that's where we met. But I did sit down on that round table discussion yeah. uh, in Beverly yeah. Hills. And, and I really recommend that event for any of you that haven't attended the luxury uh, connect event. It's in October every year in Beverly Hills and uh, highly recommend it. And Tell me some of the things you guys, you're doing right now. I know you have an exciting show you're working on. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, not working on. We worked on it for four years, so thank God it's all finally done. So um, just kind of a little bit of background so that the, the viewers understand. Um, I'm trained not only, you know, I'm trained in TV. So a lot of the kids when Million Dollar Listing first started, um, those are my, you know, my best friends, you know, uh, Madison Hildebrand. And, Chad Rogers, and then Chad, when he got off, um, I was supposed to start and be on Million Dollar Listing when Chad got on, which was like 2006, but that was the first time I had cancer. I'm a three-time cancer survivor, so I couldn't be on the show with him, and then that's what opened up the door for Josh Altman to be able to come on, and so, you know, I'm very proud and privileged to say, you know, Josh and Matt are like my little brothers, you know, um, I, I call all of them my kids. I just love them, you know, so much. And it's been cool to watch their, their, their careers all grow, you know, from the access to the show, from their million dollar listing opened up um, in San Fran, Miami. Um, and then obviously, as you guys know, New York. So I've been, uh, I've helped a lot of the guys, some of the guys um, from the, from the show during the years, um, walk them through the TV stuff. Um, and I am trained to be on TV as a, as a host 
Unfortunately, I was not able, when I was general manager for Hilton and Highland, um, to be on TV. I had been signed for my own show, um, and I was unable to do that because they, they didn't want me representing um, Hilton and Highland and then also being on, on a TV show. So um, when I left for managing at Hilton and Highland, uh, that's where you're going to see Aaron Kerman, um, who is the luxury director over at, um, not luxury director, I don't know what, it, what the title would be. But, official title. Um, yeah, it, whatever. We we he came to me and said, "Listen, I want to be on TV. Want to want to build a team." And um, at the time, he had about five agents. Now we're at sixty-five agents, um, and our TV show on CNBC will be airing on January fifteenth, uh, twenty twenty. So we're looking forward to that on CNBC. That's great. That's great. And the title again is. Um, everybody can go on right now. Look at the trailer. Do you go to CNBC Listing Impossible? So the name of the show is Listing Impossible. You'll see the bio, and then boom, you'll see everything, uh, what we're doing. So we're, we're that's, very that's excited about that. That's a great title, by the way, Listing Impossible. Well, that gets us into a uh, perfect segue into your show, doesn't it, Michael? Because it, it, it is, it really does. <laughs> you know, what, what we do here in, in Beverly Hills, we've got some of the most expensive real estate in the world, as I'm sure everybody knows. Um, we only deal with, you know, your uber high net wealth individuals. Uh, deal with with people all over the world. Hence, why you know I've I've had to be an international real estate speaker. Um, I still am a co-founder in a company in China, so I've been going over there for many many years. A lot of your viewers may know of a company called Juwai.com. Juwai was is the number one real estate portal in the world for the Chinese, and I was actually the only worldwide ambassador for Juwai. So my buddies are the guys that founded that company. So yeah, that's, that's why I'm, I go to China all the time. I do speaking events and, and so forth over there. So I've been doing that for, for a very long time. If we have Inman, New, Inman Connect uh, uh, participants on the call right now or listening to the podcast, um, uh, Brad would give me an all day on Friday on main stage, and I would do talk about the Chinese, how to work with uh, uh, internationals. So we would have an all day Friday of doing that. So that's kind of what my forte is, building teams working with the brokerages in order to white label their luxury uh, education series. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do for a lot of the top brokers. Um, and then if you're a team and you're wanting to build what I call as a celebrity team, um, that's really what I focus on. Um, I don't, uh, you know, people starting out or, or smaller teams, I don't really focus on. And that's where, you know, Michael, you and I work together because I do, you know, mm -hmm. send a lot of the people that I just, I just, quite frankly, don't have time to, sure. to get everybody in with everything that I'm doing. There's just too many things, and you got to focus <laughs> a little bit yeah. to where you can really do the best job for somebody. So I'm glad to have you. Chris and I are very glad to have you that we can, you know, work with clients back and forth with one another on. Yeah, likewise. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you guys are doing some amazing things. I love your website, by the way. It's so different and unique how it, you know, kind of flips through. It's so high class. Um, and do you want to share your website with uh, everybody? Sure. Yeah. If anybody, the viewers ever want to, you know, find out a little bit more about what we do, it's Berman and Pollinger, all spelled out, B-E-R-M-A-N-A-N-D-P-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R.com. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great website. Tells you a little bit more about Jennifer and her partner Chris, and um, just you know, great people. You know, really, really appreciate our our relationship. And so, you know, you, you're working with the, the Uber uh, top agents, uh, uh, teams. You know, five, you know, multi million dollar producers, and you know. That's really what the show is, is is about. You're working with these ultra successful agents, and they they are taking on some of these difficult, yeah. impossible uh, listings, right. if you will. And and when you use the word impossible, how would you define impossible? Is it by price point? Hey, there's only one sale above 250 million, a, a, you know, a, a year in the United States, and and these are some of them. Is it? style? Is it too personalized? Is it, what are some of the difficulties? Such a great question. It's such a great question, Michael, because, you know, it, it's, I, listen, I've done real estate all over the United States, um, you know, for over 20 years now. So I'm very, very familiar. I started off in relocation. So that's mm -hmm. why I am so familiar. Like I had Norfolk Southern as a client. I had Boeing International, Lockheed Martin, so when you're talking, you know, different kind of companies such as that, you know, I've sold everything from mobile homes 
you know, to the $300 million homes. I mean, you know, mm. to everything. And I sell islands, castles. That's one thing everybody knows about me. If you have something that you're trying to sell worldwide, one of the very first phone calls goes to me because I have the access to all the brokers and agents and I know who does what worldwide. Um, I never would have said that over 10 years ago. And our, our industry has just changed so drastically in terms of how we operate our business if we're going to be a single agent or a team. I remember back in the late 90s, you know, or, or early 2000s even, there, well, especially in the 90s, there weren't teams. So I had been trained on creating teams with the brokers back then, and then boom. I mean, obviously now, in my opinion, you know, especially in, in my marketplace here in Beverly Hills or in Southern California, it, it's almost impossible not to be a team. And if you're not a team, then I'm telling you right now, the agents within the brokerages definitely partner up, although not officially as an LLC or in, or in a, a, an official business capacity, but they definitely partner up with other agents in order to, to deal with the changes of our clients now. So to answer your question on an impossible listing, it is not only the, the price of the home, it's the attitude of the sellers. And so what our strength and our forte is, is this. Everybody loves to be the second or the third agent in. If you're a seasoned agent on the phone, you know exactly what I mean by that on the podcast. Mm -hmm. In terms of if, if I list it right now, okay, I, I'll tell you right now. I had a celebrity. This just happened to me. Just happened. Celebrity, been working on for a year. Huge name. Everybody knows him. Obviously, I can't say who. They, I had the listing agreement, said, okay, pull it out. We, I'll sign it right now at $8 million. No, your home isn't worth $8 million. Your home's worth $6 million. I'm not going to do it. So what happens if I bring you an offer at, at, at $6 million? What, what are you going to do? Well, then I'm going to feel like you're stealing from me. Okay, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this is what the seller said. So although I'm super good friends with these people, the whole nine yards, I refuse to put you on days on market, especially at the holidays, because that is a listing impossible. And right now I have momentum as a broker where everything I list sells. So what I also don't wanna do, I'm a very much about energy and, and about having momentum and about that right mental space. So when you have clients that are not, the days of coming in and taking these listings at a higher price and saying, oh, just take it, just take it. Hey, I used to tell my agents to do that, okay? So I, th this is, I'm just saying what's happening new in the trend right now. We are now not doing that because I think Aaron right now has over 60 listings as an, as an example, one of my, one of my agents. Um, they have over 60 listings, okay? We don't need to keep taking them overpriced. So we have to get into reality because we're entering into an election year. Now, when you Google election year and if the market slows down or if it, or if it stays okay, you, you're going to get all kinds of different information on this one. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting to me. I'm going to tell you why, Michael. I feel that on an election year, it doesn't matter who the candidate is. I'm not, I'm not getting a, 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 into that at all. What's sure. not the point sure. at all. The point is this. It is an unknown in the market financially. So on my luxury speaking clients, do they not have the money to purchase? No, that's not what it is. Are they going to wait and see if they can get a better deal on days on market? You better believe it. So what have we seen over the past 12 months? We have seen the prices in our luxury market, not declining. I'm not trying to get, get off and say something like that, but let me give an example. This year in 2019, when we were selling homes, I can tell you anywhere in Southern California, not just in, in Beverly Hills, it's anywhere in Southern California because we go all the, all the way down the coast. If I had a dollar for every conversation I had with a seller and saying, I could have gotten you a million dollars the year before, and I can't now. And that is the reality. And one thing, listen, you guys on this podcast may know a thousand things. I don't. I know about three things. 
But those three things I know really, really well. And one of those things that I know is that how, what you're going to sell the home for and probably how long it's going to take to sell the home. Don't ask me why. Just got that intuition, whatever it is. I'm pretty mm-hmm. darn spot on on that. I just, it's just a strength I've always had. And that is one thing I've, I've told my clients. I can own, and you never tell somebody what to, it was the price of, <laughs> exactly what the home is going to sell for. So you, I don't, don't recommend that at home. That's not what I'm saying. We don't have crystal balls. This is a strength that I have in knowing my, the different marketplaces and the individual homes. So when we come in and the top agents in the market have already listed the home two or, you know, two times, three times, whatever, then we can come in and we will get a price. We restage the home always. That's another thing that a lot of age, other agents don't do. This is our strength or, you know, another strength. We can go in and let's say the home is staged. I will restage that home. I don't care if you've already spent the money on it. I'm going to restage it because if it isn't the right feel for that home, you're not going to sell it. It's all about the initial presentation of the buyer walking in and feeling like it's that home, their home. So you've Mm -hmm. got to depersonalize these luxury homes. Just Mm -hmm. because it's been professionally decorated does not mean that's going to reach out to all of the buyers. And so that is it. You have to be really strong in in how you come across and do the staging. I would I, I don't there would never be a home in the luxury market that I would not stage. I'll tell you that hands down. There are certain things that you have to do in this industry, and if you want to be in luxury, I'm only speaking to luxury right now. I'm not speaking to any other demographic. So when I make these absolutes, it's only about the luxury space. So you have to go in. You have to have an eye for for the staging. You have to understand how to depersonalize. You have to make sure that you're doing the right things for yourself as a business in terms of do I have the proper numbers behind me? If I'm a new luxury agent, and I love this, this I get this question for, for 20 years in Beverly Hills, or, or not question, statement. Well, I'm, I got my real estate license. Uh, my aunt has her $13 million home. She's giving it to me. Yeah, right. Give me a break. Let's see how many times that goes through, and let's see how you're going to sell it. I love everybody getting into our industry, thinking that we're going to put some donuts out at an open house. And unfortunately, this is the problem that Million Dollar Listing did to our industry, even though I'm behind the scenes with a lot of that. It's that no, putting out all the donuts or whatever, just doing an open house. No, that's not what sells a home. So you have to make sure for yourself if they, that there's numbers behind you. If you're a new luxury agent, the biggest tip I would say to you, find your top luxury agent that has the numbers behind them. Ask them if you have a listing presentation to go with you and split it 50-50 with them. Great advice. Now, I'm telling you right now, I had people commit Harry Carey yelling at me, people that have been in the industry 40 years. Guess what, Booby? It isn't the same deal as it was five years ago. You want to play with the big dogs? You want to be in the luxury space? You got to have the street cred behind you. And honey, I'll take 50% of something all day long than 100% of zero. That's my opinion. Great point. Great point. So, and it's 100% of nothing is nothing. (laughs) That's it. And, and you can't go in if you've not been in our industry. No, it is not easy to do that. And the sellers expect for you to have the numbers behind you. And if you don't know how to stay strong and your seller comes to you and says, I'm going to do $8 million sign right now, a new agent's going to lay down all day long and think, oh, my God, I'm going to sell this home for 7 may not be worth 8 but I'll get 7 No, you won't. So just know what, you're, what the reality of the situation what you can go in, what you're trying to do. In addition to that, you've got to have to be found when they Google you. If I Google you and you're using some ABC website from the broker, you're not up in business. So as a new agent getting into luxury, you're going to mostly deal with buyers. And to be honest with you, in the luxury market right now, and, and I'll tell you right now what's happening, is there are so many of our listings, we've got Two, three, four, one of our listings has seven different brokerages on the listing. Yeah, and that, we see Would that you, a lot more yep. in, in your market, um, in, in New York, um, yep. m- maybe some of the, you know, Florida. But we don't see that in a lot of the m- major pockets in the U.S., i.e. Chicago. You don't see multiple you will. brokerages. Wait, that's my, that's my answer. And doing for decades in the real estate industry, let me tell you, if everybody doesn't know really how things go down, you watch what London does, 
London market flows over into New York. New York market, whether it goes up or down, flows into LA. LA market then goes into the rest of the United States of America. So then commercial real estate falls about two years behind that when you're talking about numbers and, and ups and downs and ebbs and flows. It, when in New York, we had to do that here because you're having, we are a global community now. So when you're having sellers that this $100 million home is their fifth home in the world, it is, they are expecting different things. What, what is scary to us is at the higher end in the luxury, we are having to really negotiate our commissions. And so when you negotiate your commissions down on the listing side and you've got three brokers on it and you have one broker that comes in with a buyer and makes more money than all of you because he brought in the buyer, these are things that we weren't saying years and years ago. Mm -hmm. I've had it happen to me a couple of times, and it's interesting to watch. Let me tell you. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. Without going into, into details, um, let's give an example. Let's just say, you know, you got 123 Rodeo Drive and you're one of three listing agents on the property. Do all three get paid when it sells or no? Do you only get paid if you're responsible for bringing the buyer or the buyer's <laughs> agent? No, 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 not at all. So if the, if the property sells, it's like a regular listing. Uh, we just split it three different ways. Okay. So we all get paid. So you could have had one agent on there that didn't do anything, never did a showing, never did anything, didn't do in marketing because he's on that listing agreement. He's getting paid just as much as you. So yep. it's split three ways, period. That's the way that it goes. Um, that, the buyer that agent. Doesn't sit, if you, that doesn't sit very well with people that if you ever done a college research project or whatever, and one person yeah. carried their weight and others didn't. No. Have you ever been on a situation where you felt you worked your, your tail off and, and no. you were present and energetic no. and and nobody else carried their weight? No, not really, because everybody well, brings good. different strength. And, okay. and I'll tell you why. When you're at that level and the, and the, and the, and the, the seller is asking for different brokerages, we're, you're, you're talking up above $20 million. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do this mm -hmm. on $5 million. I wouldn't waste my time on something like that. Right. You're, you're right. talking the, the higher number one uh, listing. So, you know, it, I don't know. I mean, it's sometimes – Luxury to me is anything above five million. So mm -hmm. if it mm -hmm. if if I do something and and I'll do it with one of uh, let's say somebody throws me a four million dollar listing, well then also another agent on it and I'll do the negotiations. But I'm sure as hell never going to be driving out to that house doing open houses or doing anything like that. I'll pay for the marketing, but I'm not going to be doing the day to day stuff. So I'll put I'll split that with another agent in my office 50 50. They'll do all the work on it. But then when it comes down to negotiations, boom, then that's when I get involved and then we take it from there. Okay. I'm going to get it okay. closed. So that's yep. worth it to split 50 50 with me. Now, you know, on the very high end luxury, it, it, what I'm what the point that I was trying to make earlier that I, I didn't I, I didn't make is that when you have a global seller and you have a global community now, they are expecting different things from you and not one agent can give you everything that you need on on a 50 million dollar transaction or or a 20 million dollar property so there could be some things that um i could bring michael you on and on and you're better at staging than i am but then i come in and i may be better at doing the negotiations and those day-to-day -day conversations with the seller than you and so we we really work very well together and any of our shared listings up in our area in Beverly Hills, we all know each other here. This is a very, very small community. So you're not going to get some ABC agent on there. If it's some ABC agent that nobody knows, they have to get a, a reputable big name on that listing with them. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. So okay. that's just kind of that's just kind of how it works. And, and then also, you know, you have to really understand what do I need to do to stage what do I, what, what is my, my, my book uh, of business that I can contact all these people around the world to get more buyers in to see this property? And then, you know, the last thing is who, how, where is my marketing going? You know, the, the, the people that are doing these large 
uh, transactions in, 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 in Southern California, they are with brokerages that have a global reach in their marketing through their broker. Mm-hmm. It, you're never going to, okay, let's give an example. Hate to break the news, but here's how it goes. You're never going to be a Remax agent and get some huge listing in luxury in, in our area. It's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. So they have to have a different reach, a different database. It's a different um, luxury look of a strategy and marketing. Uh, there's just different things that you have to do. So a couple of questions that come to mind. And I, first off, I completely agree with you. I love how you're talking about global connections, international, additional exposure. You talked about staging and positioning. Uh, you talked about... You know, sometimes it's better to be the second or third agent. There's an old adage, you want to be the firstborn, the second wife, and the third real estate agent in real estate. That's an old saying there. But um, t- talk to me about, in your experience, and, and again, this doesn't have to be, uh, you know, just, I guess, knee-jerk reaction. I would like to hear your thoughts. Based on your $5 million-plus experience, what percent of the time is, first off, is dual agency allowed in California? Yes, it is. What, what percent of the time, I'm just curious, um, in your personal experience, and, and I'm not going to hold you to it, but just knee-jerk reaction, in your personal experience, what percent of the time would you say, uh, when you were the listing agent or one of your team members is, for properties $5 million and above, what percent of the time is there no other agent involved, whether it be dual agency or the buyer to say, I don't want to be represented? What, what percent of the time would you guesstimate? It's a low percentage because when you're in the luxury space, everybody knows an agent. Everybody's got an agent. So when we have people come over, you know, listen, I've got a guy coming in from, from Singapore in February, and he will buy a $15 million to $20 million home. So he didn't come over. He doesn't know anybody here. And uh, I do a lot in Singapore, but he doesn't know who I am. And even though I'm with Jawahi, he doesn't know who I am. So it did not come from that. Um, they reached out to another top broker. The broker knows that I deal um, uh, in a, a very, very fluent in the Asian communities. Um, they got them with me. I will give that agent a 25% referral fee. And even though that a, that broker, not an agent, that broker could have done it themselves, they know they had a bird in a hand, and they know if anybody's going to close them, I'm going to. And so they would prefer to get a 25% referral than sitting there, it waits, you know, not knowing when the guy's going to come over. And then that allows that person, that individual in, in, in Singapore to see all the marketing that I do, all the um, – create that, that, that credibility in their mind so that they, when they do come over, they know that, that what I'm doing – I know what I'm talking about. Now, let me tell you something that I did on this one. This is something I've never, ever, ever done before, and nor did I need to. But I want to close this person. I went out to a different brokerage and I asked one of the top buyers agent in the city if they would do it with me and split 50-50. Never done that in my entire life. I'm, I'm trying to test, I'm testing it out because I know okay. they're going to have pockets that I don't. Sure. So it, it's, you know, and, and a lot of the things that I do, it, because I'm not, guys, I'm not, I'm not out there trying to be a broker. I'm not trying to sell real estate. That's not what my forte is. Pull my numbers. I don't put anything under my name. I put it all under the agent's name. I could care less. That's not my book of business. That's not what I do. Um, I, I'm a speaker. I train, you know, huge. I do the brokerages only for getting them into the luxury space. Um, I, Chris and I, you know, white label things for the brokerages and then for select agents across the United States of America, we will, we will take their team up. And then obviously I'm known as, as the, the person in the industry getting you on TV, helping, helping with those type of things as well. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that's what my forte is. So to test things out on the market, I'm kind of doing it for our show, Listing Impossible, because I got tagged so hard on one of our properties that is going to be on the show that's going to be aired. It was three agents I had to split it with. That buyer came in. I just like threw up in my mouth thinking about what the buyer's agent that I brought in that got made more money than I did, and I killed mm-hmm. myself and spent all kinds of money on the listing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's no, it's so th- this is yeah, this is yeah. changing. This is not the way that it's always been. So you know, it's it's you know the book Who Moved My Cheese? Get it? I had to read it. Yep. <laughs> 
right. like everything kind of different now, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, you the reason I asked, by the way, about what percent of the, the transactions you've been part of, five million and above, uh, is there no other agent involved, or the the buyer doesn't want to be represented? And you said very small. You see, in my marketplace in the Midwest, and as well as some of the other uh, guests I've had on the show, you know, the percentages that we're seeing are, are greater in that Correct. ultra Uber and I'll luxury tell you why. than the average price point. Right. And, I, and I'll tell you why probably that the reason is when you get um, on the, the lower scale of luxury, you know, luxury, one million is huge in a lot of the, the, the market areas, which is great. But, you know, I'm not saying anything, but you're going to have more people that don't know other agents because that's it's not like a global market like in Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if I went outside, even in Orange County it would be more of a higher percentage for me to have a buyer on my listing than it would be in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. So I could see where you're saying that across the country because they're sitting open houses. They're kind of in that listing agent is probably a top agent that is in the luxury space. So their book of business are those people that can afford that luxury home of 5 million and below. So because of that, you're going to see more dual agency than if it's in my area where everybody has money. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. You know, yep. so so it's, it's who dominates in that luxury space has the ability to do the dual agency. Now, when I'm speaking, I'm not speaking from one brokerage. I've worked with all the different brokerages. So I, I just want to make sure the, the listeners understand that I'm not coming from one space from from Christie's or just Compass or anything. No, no, no. I'm talking about everybody. So. If, if you're a luxury agent that's doing that, which is great, um, you definitely need to get the manager involved to where they're doing the negotiations and you're out of it. And that's the problem that we get into because I know firsthand that there are people in different luxury markets across the country that are saying, oh, well, I'll just wait and not take your offer. I'm going to work my own offer. No, no, no. What should be happening if you're a broker on this call? You should have a, uh, a hand in this as I did with all my agents. And if that happens, all the offers come to me, and then I help negotiate what the offers are, not the listing agent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's unethical because they will they'll hold, they'll double in their own. Yeah. And that's not right. Yep. Yeah. And, and then what seeing... they do is they take down their commission split. Let's just give it an arbitrary number. Let's say it was a 5% on MLS. Well, then if the agent comes in, they'll put in the listing agreement. Well, I'll take it at four if I have my own buyer. Well, that's right. not cool. That's right. not right. That's why we have the problem in the industry that we do, because nobody is having a hold on this and watching this in the luxury space. You can't do that. Yep. No, you can't. And that's part of the reason that we're seeing, you know, at, at, at the NAR conference, as you know, in the, right. in the fall in 2019, they're, they're coming up with the new pocket yep. listing rules because of this. That's right. Well, that's why I love some of these new companies that are coming out like Proppy um, that are the smart contract. And you're not able to do that anymore because mm-hmm. everybody sees the offers that come up. And now there's a, there's a risk management. Those of us that are brokers that have agents working on us. We can see what's going on. You can't do that with Skyflow. Right. Okay. Right. You, you can't, you right. can't do that. So it's, it's hard as a manager or a broker. I'm sure there's people scratching their heads saying, well, how the heck do you do this? Because you got to be active, man. You got to know as a broker what your agents are doing. What's the world on the street is, is, is another agent from another broker. So on your agent on our bus, cause they're notorious in the area for doing that. Come mm-hmm. on. You mm-hmm. know that across the country that you got people doing that. Mm-hmm. That's not a fiduciary yeah. responsibility. It's not right. No, you're absolutely And then I think right. it's up to the office to nip that in the bud. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I want it out there. Yeah. No, I, I think that's great. I, I would agree with you. Um, yeah. What, um, out of curiosity, uh, last question I have for you, and then I want to uh, have you wrap things up in regards to a, a couple things. But first question or last question I guess I have for you would be on on the luxury side of things, uh, do you see in your marketplace or based on you have your fingers in different markets with different brands, do you see, um, unfortunately, agents compete in the, the various market by 
being the, the, the cheaper agent or commission dropping to get listings in, in, the, in that Uber luxury space? Or no. do you not see that as much in your marketplace? No. No, because when it, when it's listen, the sellers are going to try and take everything for for from us in, in the story, and so they'll they'll take you. I mean, it's it's insane. They'll take you down for a dollar, and you're selling a you know a two hundred million dollar home. Welcome. That's just that's the way that it is. It's a game to them. It's not about the money. It's a game to them. Um, again, it's more of the street cred, the numbers you have behind you, and what your success rate is to sell the property. Mm-hmm. So. If that agent comes in and he's always undercutting on the commissions, they're they're I guarantee you they have more of a team and they're not even making their overhead. So they're working there and I should trust me, I know a lot of agents that do do those things and it uh-huh. only hurts them in the end. Yep. So now they're trying to revamp them. that and redo that. It hurts them, but don't you think it also hurts the consumer, the seller? Because if an agent has a small sure. profit window, they're going to invest less time and energy and marketing dollars to get the property sold. Well, and then I'll, I'll leave your, your, your listeners with this. One of my, my greatest taglines, if something like that happens, say, hey, listen, you know, if, if it's between me and that person and I know what they're doing on the commission split, if there's, you know, two things. Obviously, we know that the old, uh, the old uh, saying, if they can't even fight for their own money. Why in the heck do you think that they're going to fight for every dollar for you? Number one. Number two, you want them to list higher than what I'm telling you what the home is going to go for and not waste your days on the market? I'm not going to do that to you personally. But hey, listen, Mr. Seller, if you want to go, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if you want to go ahead and build that agent's career because they're going to build their portfolio because of your high dollar listing, knock yourself out. When it doesn't sell, and then, it, then give me a call then because I'm going to sell it and I'll be right on what it is. And I'll bet you $100. <laughs> That's it. Love it. Love it's it. true. Love it. Well, so, <laughs> and, so, and another one I love to do, if you know that busy agent that's in the marketplace is trying to undercut their thing. All right, Mr. Mr. Seller, let's sit. I'm at the listing presentation. Let's sit right now. Let's see if you can get the guy, the person on the phone. Call him. See how many times it goes to voicemail. Hey, you want to work with somebody like that and to build their right. portfolio and build their business? you know, then that's what you do. You want somebody who's going to work hard, pick up the phone and talk to you and get your home sold, then let's rock and roll. Yep. Yep. I I like it. I love, I love your philosophy. Uh, I love what you and Chris are doing. Again, uh, one more time for anybody that wants uh, the the website, it's it's Berman and and Pollinger, right? Pollinger, P-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R.com. Pollinger. If you just do Jennifer Berman, Google me, Jennifer Berman plus real estate, you got me. Awesome. Listing Impossible. Check it out. January, you said 15th? I did. January 15th. Check it out. What a great title. CNBC. CNBC. Yep. Looking forward to, to seeing that. You've been working on that for four years. The sales cycle for high-end and luxury homes in most markets is very long. You build relationships. It takes a long time. Jennifer has been working on this for four years. It doesn't happen like it, you see it on million-dollar agents where they get mm-hmm. the big property, they get multiple bids, and it sells overnight. These things take time. Jennifer, well, thank we you want so much you for to, your time. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Michael, for having me. I appreciate your passion, the, your commitment to raising the bar in the industry. It, it, it is needed. Love what you and Chris are doing. Keep raising the bar. And, again, if you guys have any questions about – Uh, today's episode or previous episodes or questions whatsoever, go ahead and shoot us an email, support at marketingluxurygroup.com, support at marketingluxurygroup. Take a look. we got some great new swag we just released. Check it out, luxuryspecialsgear.com. Keep raising the bar in real estate and make 2020 your best year ever. My name is Michael Lofito. Go make somebody's day. Take care. 